welcome to The Kelly Roach Show, a place for no fluff, easy to implement, 20 minute or less business and leadership lessons to help you build a sustainable business that scales. Let's get started. Welcome back. This is The Kelly Road Show, and today we are talking about how to create more discipline so that you can live the life of your dreams. One of the most important things that you will notice about all highly successful people is that they are wildly disciplined. And it's very counterintuitive because the more freedom you crave in your life, the more important discipline is because discipline is what creates freedom. And I certainly have learned this over the last few years as I went from running an eight-figure company to running six companies to promoting presidents of those companies, building new leadership teams, launching new businesses and new industries, acquiring a business. I had to learn a lot about discipline in order to maintain the quality of life, the focus on family, the focus on faith, and the focus on health and wellness that really matters so much to me. And so today I want to break down for you some of those core lessons that are going to make the biggest difference for you so that you can absolutely crush your goals in the new year. So let's start by talking about discipline from the context of how do you stay motivated, right? Highly successful people do not run on inspiration. They do not run on a creative fluke. They don't run on a moment of uh, inspiration because willpower and inspiration and creativity – And all of those things that come to us in moments are not sustainable for the big picture of how we create replicable results consistently, right? You've all heard the phrase starving artists so many times, right? And starving artists are many times the most wildly talented people that you will ever meet. And yet they're broke and they're struggling and they can't seem to get ahead in life or in their craft many times because they have that stroke of creative genius, but that stroke of creative genius is not married with the discipline of what you need to do for that creative genius to be monetized, to be seen, to be uh, recognized, to get paid for that genius that they have right? So you don't want to be the starving artist of your craft that is kind of flowing through your day and through your week and you're like, wow, I have such a relaxed and free schedule and, you know, I get to do what I want when I want. And then the byproduct of that tends to be that you will have these horrible cycles of feast or famine in your life and in your business over and over again. Whereas the degree to which you exercise discipline in your daily life, you can have a ton of freedom in the off hours. And this is the big thing that I have learned. So for me, Monday through Thursday, I am pretty much structured every hour of every day. And this includes, and I've talked about this before, when I'm doing my schedule and when I'm mapping out Uh, my calendar, I put in my time for faith. I put in my time for family. I put in my health and wellness blocks. I put in my walks, my time with my personal trainer, exercise, prayer circle, uh, time with friends, time with family. All of that gets blocked first. So for example, when I look at my calendar for next year, the first thing that I did was I blocked out the days that Madison is off. So I'm off when she's off. Second thing is I already know I take a sabbatical in August every year. Third thing is I know I'm going to take my vacations and do my family travel when Madison's off school, right? So I'm already starting with that. Then I'm moving into, okay, what are my wellness blocks? What are my health blocks? Um, What is the time that I need uh, from a self-care standpoint, from a vitality standpoint to be successful performing as a CEO at the level that I need to be? right? And then I'm going to move through progressively back into the business. Monday through Thursday, every hour of every day essentially is blocked. But Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, completely free. 
completely free, right? Which means that I don't have meetings. I don't have calls. I don't have structure. I don't have to follow a disciplined schedule. I can wake up without an alarm clock. I can wake up and, you know, take a walk, go to the beach, uh, do the things that I love with my family, bring in my masseuse, go to the spa, go to the gym. You know, there's no schedule, right? And so the degree to which you have discipline in the in-season is the degree to which you can have freedom in the off-season and you can have predictable and consistent results. So number one is choose the times of week that you're going to have extreme discipline and choose the times of week that you're going to have total freedom. And you will be motivated to stick to your discipline times when you know that it's creating that fluidity and that freedom and that white space in the off cycle times. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is get really, really clear during your discipline structured times on all of the things that need to be mapped out during those times and make sure that they're set on a recurring basis. One of the biggest differences between me and the vast majority of people and why I recommend that most entrepreneurs do not have multiple businesses and do not have multiple ventures is that I am so disciplined with my time that I can in one day move from managing one company to the other and lead teams and have one-on-ones and, you know, do these things because my, my time is so structured and when I set my blocks, I stick to them. And my team will tell you this. I am so disciplined in sticking to the schedule that I created and I don't move from it. And if you can get to a place where you have that level of discipline with the recurring things that need to happen every week in your life and in your business in order to both grow and be happy and be vital and you don't change them, if you keep those commitments to yourself, you are going to be so happy, so productive, you are going to be able to get the results that you want. Now, here's what I see happening instead with the vast majority of entrepreneurs that I come in contact with. They they map out the blocks, they schedule out the blocks, they get clear on what the blocks need to be, and then the moment something happens, they just throw confetti in the air They completely changed their schedule. Now here they are, they're just frantic, running from one thing to the next, constantly changing what they're doing, constantly changing their schedule. Uh, And then, you know, obviously everything becomes messy and overwhelming because everything feels out of control because it is out of control. The thing with time blocking that's so crucial when I say about discipline and committing to your schedule is that you need time not just for the meetings and calls that you're going to have with other people, you need time on your calendar for the unexpected things that come up throughout the week that tend to derail you. So what I mean by that is you need to have blocks for operations. You need to have blocks for finance. You have to have blocks for team questions that come up where they can book 15-minute slots with you. You need to have blocks where um, extraneous client things come up that you need to handle. If you don't plan for the unexpected, then the unexpected will go into the blocks, you know, that were supposed to be mapped out for the things that were really important to you. And now instead, um, they're going towards things that, you know, you didn't even want to spend time on, but you have to spend time on. So planning for the unexpected is really important and being super thoughtful about what those blocks are going to be, inclusive of absolutely everything. And then the flip side of that is, again, sticking to those commitments, knowing when you're in freedom mode and when you're in super high discipline mode, uh, and one is what fuels the other, right? The third thing is, is to remember that when you want to accomplish big goals, you are not going to wake up motivated every day. You are not going to wake up inspired every day. You are not going to wake up like, yes, I cannot wait to tackle this list every day. That is just not how it works. That is a fairy tale, okay? You can be grateful. Like, I woke up this morning very grateful. I woke up this morning and I prayed and I really like anchored into my why and today just so happens to be a day where I'm going to be on launch later today and I prayed to the Holy Spirit that the words come through me, that I can be of service, that I can fulfill my obligation to the people that give me the honor of being live with me. I was in that mode and in that mindset this morning and yet I woke up tired today and I woke up not excited to be recording on camera right now and I did not wake up inspired this morning, okay? I got myself in a state in order to perform 
at a high level, but it doesn't mean that every day you're going to wake up inspired as a creator. And if you're relying on that, then that's going to run out and it's going to fail you over and over again. And then you're going to be wondering why you can't get the results that you want. So you need to rely on structure that creates an environment of success, not rely on inspiration that's going to come and go. And so that's my third big point when it comes to really anchoring into your goals, which is that you need to have the fuel of uh, an environment that is going to be conducive to achieving your goals, not something that relies on your inspiration or creativity that day, right? Which is why for me, like when it comes to content, when I go to record content, I'm never like, oh, let me go think of something that I'm going to talk about today. I always have a running list with the team of topics that have come up in conversations, that have come up in client calls, that we've heard in the market, that we know that I need to create. So I'm not sitting down to record and trying to figure out something to talk about. I already know that there's a list of things that are relevant, that are meaningful, that are timely, uh, that I need to record, that, that people are counting on from me. Okay, so again, it's it's not relying on inspiration or willpower, but instead create an environment that is conducive to your success and a structure that that fuels that. The fourth thing is really knowing when your good hours are and when uh, you are going to be most productive. Right? This is this is important. Uh, if you're an early bird, be an early bird. If you're a night owl, be a night owl. Uh, I think it's important to identify when you do your best work and to lean into that and to remember that you know you probably became an entrepreneur because the traditional nine to five hours weren't maybe the best hours for you. So the other thing is that you know the average person does you know, maybe three hours of really productive work each day. I think being really clear when you wake up in the morning what those three hours of high intent work are for you. Uh, I hear from a lot of people that they do like a lot of planning on Sunday nights and they do a lot of structuring for the week and and a lot of like resetting of their, their schedule throughout the week and a lot of email management. I spend pretty much zero time on email management. I spend zero time on planning my week because – I am putting everything in time blocks as I go. So when I go into a week, I check to review what is on my week schedule already, but I'm not planning my week. My week is already planned. I have recurring time blocks for everything that are allocated appropriately. So I already know coming into the week, anything that's related to team, I'm going to do on Tuesday. Anything that's related to serving clients, I'm going to do on Thursday. Anything that's related to CEO responsibilities and strategy and high-level operational things that only I can do, that's going to happen on Monday. And then content and PR and creative things are going to happen on Wednesday. So there's already allocations for all of those things. There's no need for me to plan differently. I just need to make sure that if there are specific things that come up that need to happen in those blocks, often what I'll do is I'll go into that block in my calendar and I'll have a list so that inside that block that's already on my calendar for that particular thing, I have a list of the specific things that I'm going to do. So eliminate those hours of planning. Eliminate those hours of resetting your calendar. Eliminate all those hours of checking email and then being in reaction mode, right? Um, What I found was I used to have a full-time Uh, COO that reported to me that was basically like my high level EA and then I had a very entry level personal assistant and I literally got to the point systematically where I have eliminated both of those jobs and saved myself time because I literally am so structured in my schedule now that I don't even need those people very few emails even come to me anymore because they go to the appropriate people on the team And so for me, email management is not something that I need another human to do for me because rarely does anything come to me. And if it is coming to me, it's probably something really crucial that actually I'm the only person that can handle. And besides that, if it comes to me and it doesn't belong to me, it just gets forwarded along, okay? So you can get to the point where you are even eliminating the need to manage. For me, I had to manage two extra people, two extra direct reports, and it was costing me $250,000 that I don't spend anymore, and now I don't need to spend that mental bandwidth managing anymore. I literally have someone that personally schedules my appointments. She works about three hours a week-ish, 
okay? So that's just what happens as you get more and more and more disciplined and structured in terms of what is your role, what are your team's roles, all of those things. Okay, so the the final thing that I'll say, and I could teach on this for hours and hours and hours, and actually I'm going to, so I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that in a quick moment. Um, the fifth thing that I would say is that, you know, I think a lot of people set goals that are – more ego-driven goals based on what they see happening in their industry, what they see happening with their competitors, you know, things that they dreamt up when they were younger, when they started their businesses, you know, whatever the case. And what I would say is like really checking and making sure that your goals are anchored in what you want to feel and experience each day, not like extraneous things that are boxes you want to check. Because if it's something that you want to feel and it's something that's an intention, it's very it's very hard for someone besides you to like disrupt that. You know, you can work on that and, and achieve that each day. If it's an extraneous thing uh, with lots of outside factors, easily to be disrupted. And what I would say is like a lot of times people set these goals and they're not actually committed and motivated to do the thing to accomplish them because they're not really their goals to begin with. So I would say really make sure that when you're setting your intentions, that you're anchoring in uh, to what you want to feel and what you want to experience in your life. And that's going to be far more productive in getting you aligned with your dream life and getting you aligned with where you want to go, what you want to do, what you actually want your life to look like. Okay, all of this said, once a year, only once a year, once a year, I not only release the new 2024 or 2023 or 2025 or 2026 planners, uh, every year we release the planners in December, which basically I had binders and notebooks and journals and, uh, you know, organizers and all these different things I used to carry around. And I got sick and tired of the wasted time and wasted energy trying to manage all of these different things. And finally, I was like, I'm just going to create my own. So I created my own a couple years ago. It is amazing. They are keepsake planners, which means that you're going to vision cast in them. You're going to write your intentions. You're going to set your goals. You're going to make your financial plan. You're going to do your uh, wealth tracking. All of that is going to happen in your planner and you're going to keep it so you can look back on it year after year. It's amazing. It's an amazing process. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope one of these five tips that I gave you on the power of discipline and how to manage your time will be helpful for you as you dig into the new year. Remember to anchor into your deep intentions, your vision for how you want to feel in the day-to-day and set your goals around that. 